Hello everyone, today I wanted to remake my older first spaceship guide to talk you through designing and building for your first spacecraft in survival. We'll go over key components and features to consider when building your own, followed by an example I put together that you can use. The purpose of this initial craft will be to get you off the surface of your starting planet at the beginning of your survival run into space to explore and map asteroids for otherwise unobtainable ore, like uranium. You could also use it for exploring economy stations surrounding your starting planet to buy components, ores or ships. We will discuss key features, recommended and optional features, as well as the ideal flight profile to get you into space the most efficient way possible. A cockpit always helps. Usually, I tend to use the original cockpit or the new flush cockpit due to them having perfect connection points for an O2 generator. An O2 generator will allow you to convert ice into oxygen and hydrogen. Oxygen, which is useful for breathing, and hydrogen, which will fuel your jetpack and hydrogen tanks if you have them. An oxygen tank can also be useful if you're not planning on taking oxygen bottles with you, though they are fairly large and take up a lot of space on smaller ships, so I tend to stick with bottles and an O2 generator to refill the bottles in. Storage will allow you to bring back any valuables you find be it ore, components from encounters or anything else. This will allow you to ferry components up to space as well if you wish to build a station or an asteroid base in the future. Generally for my first spaceship I opt for a single medium cargo container which is sufficient enough for early game trips. For power, you can either have a purely battery powered vessel, which will have to recharge whilst docked to a station or base, or have power generation on board in the form of a reactor or a hydrogen engine. If you're in the fortunate position to have somehow got your hands on uranium, I would definitely opt for one small reactor on your vessel, along with some small batteries. I would otherwise recommend having a large battery on board and just recharging at your station. This gives you less range, but will save weight and space on your vessel. Hydrogen tanks will allow you to store hydrogen to fuel any hydrogen thrusters your ship may have. I always use hydrogen thrusters on my first spacecraft, so I always have the tanks for them. In terms of how many you can carry, one small tank to one small thruster is normally a decent ratio, anything beyond that is even better. If you load some ice into your cargo before takeoff, your O2 generator can turn that into more hydrogen to refill your tanks whilst in flight, giving you even more range. I also tend to put a connector on the underside of my ships. Here I am only piping it up with small conveyors because I will primarily be gathering ore in space. Some components can't pass through small conveyors, so if you'll be salvaging and collecting components, ensuring you have a large conveyor port into your storage is key. Assuming you have started on Earth or a similar planet with an atmosphere, you will likely have spent a lot of time flying around on atmospheric thrusters. These are brilliant. For atmosphere, but in vacuum, we need to use either hydrogen or ion thrusters. Ion thrusters require platinum for the thruster components. Maybe by chance you have stumbled across some, so are able to use ion thrusters, which can work, but I would almost always recommend using hydrogen thrusters on your first spaceship. Ice is plentiful on the majority of starting scenarios, which produces the hydrogen fuel which you'll have to store in tanks on board your vessel, but in return, they have the highest thruster output. On your spacecraft, I recommend having strong upwards atmospheric thrust with hydrogen in all of the directions. This will allow you to exit the atmosphere most efficiently by flying to the flight ceiling first on atmospheric thrusters, then kicking in your hydrogen thrusters to take you the rest of the way to space. That will get you to space, let you roam about and see the sights, but if you want to get more out of your trips, there's a few other components I'd add. Ore detectors and antennas. These will allow you to fly around and map the asteroids above your starting base for ore deposits. Mark these with GPS coordinates and they will be extremely useful for when you expand your base into the asteroid fields. Spotlights. These are extremely handy for helping spot ores on asteroids and investigating wrecks. 
Cameras will help you spy ore deposits from far away, as well as seeing asteroids and encounters. A parachute hatch will give you peace of mind when re-entering. Make sure you put canvas inside it and set the deploy height, then it will automatically kick in and provide a soft landing for you. They're also good if you enjoy cannonballing back into the atmosphere for fun. Adding drills to your ship can be a good idea. This will allow you to mine ice to refuel and gather ores much more quickly and save you constantly getting out of the cockpit and chasing the ores as they fly away. They're also pretty good bumpers. If you're worried things might get tasty or you want to encounter wrecks, mayday signals and such, you could pack your conversational cylinders. But I would definitely try to avoid combat with your only method of getting to space and back. Bringing a survival kit can make your life much easier, allowing you to respawn from it so you can go roaming around in your suit and you know you won't lose your shuttle. You'll also be able to process basic ores and create basic components for easy repairs and modifications if required. To get to space easily and fuel efficiently, follow this flight profile. First, group all your forward hydrogen thrusters. If you sit in the cockpit of a craft, it will assign directions to the hydrogen thrusters. Put them all into a group named forward or something similar. Then, on your toolbar in the cockpit, add an increase and decrease thruster override toggle. Then create a separate group with all the hydrogen thrusters called hydro thrust or something similar and set a toggle on the cockpit toolbar for on off. Ensure you're fully fueled and you have ice in your O2 generator and then switch off all your hydrogen thrusters. Hold down space and ascend on atmospheric thrusters only. Once your speed begins to drop, switch on your hydrogen thrusters and point directly upwards. Increase your thruster override until you begin accelerating upwards again. You can view your velocity vector on the internal cockpit LCD. Use the override keys to keep the speed between 90 and 95 meters per second. There is no use pushing against the 100 meters per second speed barrier as it's just wasted fuel. As you get further out, the gravitational pull will lessen and you'll be able to reduce your thruster override. Keep going and maintain speed until P gravity equals zero. Then you have successfully reached space. Here are some example ships I made to show you what I would typically use to get me into space during a survival run. I have one with drills and one without. Dropping the drills will allow you to ferry more cargo back and forth, but make collecting ore more of a chore. So pick your poison. Beyond this, I have upwards atmospheric thrust to push me high into the atmosphere, followed by hydrogen thrust all round. I have eight small hydrogen tanks, which is slightly on the lower end, but still just enough for short missions. I have some spotlights to help navigate, as well as landing gear, a forward camera, and an antenna or detector combination for mapping out asteroids. Feel free to copy this design or use it yourself, link will be in the description. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed, please like, comment and subscribe to support the channel, and as always, take care, everybody.